Hi there, I'm Carl, and today on Carl Makes Things, we're going to be painting up a Black Templar, including uh, putting some transfers onto his shoulder pads there. Um, this is all footage taken from my last Twitch stream, uh, which was uh, a few days ago, and uh, everything went pretty smoothly. This is a fairly simple scheme to get going, so uh, without uh, further ado, let's get started. So I primed this mini black and I grabbed some basalt gray and a makeup brush to kind of put down the first layer of dry brushing for this. Um, I'm not using sponge blending for this guy because I want to pick up more details on the highlighted areas, kind of the, the raised areas, and I don't want to get so much into the recesses. That's one of the things that sponge blending does. Um, I also don't mind it being a little scratchy and broken up because in this context uh, for this technique, uh, I want the armor to feel a bit more worn. So that's with one pass of uh, basalt gray. It's looking pretty good. And we're gonna move on to stonewall gray next. This is a similar you know, concept here. We're dry brushing, but instead of getting it all over the place to add uh, volume uh, lighting, we're just focusing on the raised areas that are gonna catch the most amount of light with this brighter, more intense gray. So once I was done dry brushing the stonewall gray and I was happy with the effect that I'd gotten with it, I moved on to mixing up some stonewall gray with a little bit of water so I could brush it into the interior of the shoulder pads. This is going to put down a base coat that I can build white on top of without having to put as many layers of white. Although in this case, I'm not actually gonna be using white, I'm gonna be using an off-white called ghost gray. It's almost white, but not quite. So the next step here is going to be doing some sponge blending. Pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to stipple on this uh, ghost gray with this makeup sponge and I'm going to mix up the ghost gray into a kind of a thin consistency. Um, not too thin that it runs into the recesses, but thin enough that it's going to come off the sponge easily. And I am using very gentle pressure here. I don't want to squeeze the paint out of the sponge. I just want to kind of deposit it where I've tapped it. Um, if I see any texture buildup uh, kind of occurring, I'm going to come in with the side of the makeup sponge that has no paint on it, kind of smooth that out. And this is just kind of a, uh, a hustle here, it's just repeating the same process over and over again until I get a consistency that I like. So the next thing I'm going to grab here is some Model Air Metallic Steel. This is an ultra bright uh, paint, uh, ultra bright silver that goes on pretty opaquely. So it's just a one and done kind of thing. I don't have to go and layer on layer after layer to get it looking good. And because it's so bright, I know where I've put it down and where I haven't, which is uh, something that might be ch more challenging on a darker mini like this when you're painting things like darker gunmetals. One thing I recommend you do when you're working with really bright metallics is actually use two rinse cups so that the metallic paint doesn't actually work its way back through the, the rinse water into your other non-metallic paints. Uh, it's a fairly simple process and it keeps your paints uh, basically consistent. The next section here is going to be me grabbing some Vallejo Game Color Gold and mixing it to a fairly thick consistency. I'm only using a bit of water for this. And just using the side of my brush, I am just kind of sketching this onto the raised areas that I think need some gold, pretty much just this kind of gauntlet and this chest piece. And then I'm gonna come back in with a clean brush and pick up any of the gold that's worked its way into any deep recesses. So to finish the base coats up on the arbor, I'm just going to tidy up the white shoulder pads. Um, the sponge technique that I use to do this is actually a little messy. I was pretty careful, but some of the uh, you know white paint got on some of the uh, components here, uh, things like the upper arms and the backpack uh, kind of vent exhausts. So with just a, a light basalt gray picked up right from my palette, I'm going to go over those areas and then just do a little bit of tidying up. So with the uh, broad strokes for the armor done, I'm going to come in with some flat brown here and start layering up uh, some paint onto his pouches. Uh, he's got a holster and a few little miscellaneous weird pouches on his belt that uh, a little coat of flat brown is going to be the starting point to kind of work up towards uh, nicer leather. The next paint I put on the palette here was a little Mecha Gunmetal from Vallejo, and I just used this to touch into a few details that uh, needed to be a bit uh, metallic, but a little darker. So the pommel of this guy's chainsword and his belt buckle. The next detail I'm going to sneak into this mini is going to be a little bit of a highlight on this wing skull here. And what I'm going to do is with a kind of medium thick uh, mix of paint, this is Stonewall Gray that I'm using as the base coat, I'm just going to come in and run the side of my brush over those feathers. And once that paint is dry, I'm going to just come back in with some Ghost Gray and essentially repeat the effect to brighten it up. Oh, and I will touch a little bit of flat brown onto this purity seal on his leg uh, in order to make way for the next kind of stage of painting, which is going to be putting some bone down on this guy. I uh, throw some Vallejo uh, Bone White onto my palette there, and I'm just going to start off 
uh, the leather with some dry brushing, uh, and then I'm gonna come in with a brush and actually paint in a bunch of scratches and just random kind of just wear and tear onto this leather. And I'm just being erratic here. I'm just kind of uh, going with my gut, uh, focusing more on the edges and kind of any place where I think that there might be wear and cracks. So the next stage here is for me to grab some dark tone. This is a dark wash that's actually fairly sticky and I'm gonna apply this pretty much right out of the bottle onto the miniature, almost like a black glaze. Um, it's gonna flow into recesses and it's gonna pool in certain areas. So while I'm working, I'm also going to keep a little bit of water there so I can come in and smooth out any kind of um, hard lines or other kind of uh, weird patterns that get formed by the uh, kind of unpredictable nature of the wash. And uh, it's really as easy as just kind of wetting your brush a little bit and just swiping over any of those kind of issues that you run into. And to make sure that I have the time to actually repair any mistakes that I may make, um, what I'm doing is working in segments. So I'm not washing the entire miniature in one go. I'm washing like each segment of his legs. And then I'm gonna go and wash like his right arm and then his left arm. And while I'm doing this, I'm paying special attention to make sure that I'm getting enough black wash onto all of the metallic areas because the thing that's going to make them actually look like natural and feel interesting is going to be this black wash. And to add more volume uh, to some of these large kind of curved surfaced areas, I'm going to come with a Q-tip and just kind of remove the wash from the tops of these surfaces and let the wash kind of naturally settle around those areas. Uh, once I'm done with those and I'm kind of satisfied with the overall armor wash, I'm going to come in with my brush and actually brush wash into all of the basalt gray areas um, that I kind of tidied up earlier. And to finish up with the uh, kind of general overall washing, I'm going to grab some Strong Tone. I know it only zipped into frame for a second, but that's all I have. Uh, strong Tone's a dark brown wash in the same kind of Army Painter Quick Shade family. And I'm just going to come over and throw it on top of the leather. And uh, while I was doing this, I actually remembered I hadn't painted that Purity Seal Bone White, so I hit that right before the next step, which is going to be some flat red. Uh, flat red is a very bright, uh, opaque red, so it's very uh, non-transparent. And I mixed it into a fairly watery mix, and I'm just going to touch it into the eye sockets or the lens sockets of this guy's helmet uh, very delicately, allowing the red to kind of flow in there with capillary action. Now, taking my strong tone, I'm just going to whip this onto all of that lovely white that I had uh, taken the extra time to make sure is nice and pretty. <laughs> and this looks like I'm ruining this right now, but what I'm going to do is use actually the same technique that I used earlier with the um, Q-tip. And with a very moist Q-tip, I'm going to come in and just delicately lift that tone back off. And it's important to note that I'm touching the mini, I'm not rubbing the Q-tip on the mini. I don't want to remove any paint, I just want to kind of suck any excess tone up off the shoulder pad. So once the tone dried on the left shoulder pad, I came in with just a brush with some water on it and I got it into the kind of crack between the shoulder pad and the uh, kind of raised rim of it, uh, just managing to just, just get it just a little bit wet. And then I took some tone on my brush and I kind of touched it in there. And what this is doing is it's utilizing the capillary action of the brush and the water I put on the pad to essentially guide the tone to exactly where I want it to go and not just spread out willy-nilly over the entire shoulder pad. And at this stage, all I really have to do is repeat the same process for the other shoulder pad. A little bit of water, a little bit of uh, tone work, a little bit of pin washing, and we're done with that. Um, then I grab my strong tone and I put uh, pretty much two fairly heavy passes on all the gold in order to kind of bring it down into the same kind of vibrance as the rest of the miniature. I also took some dark tone and touched it into the feathers of the winged skull on his chest to kind of accentuate the uh, contrast of the feathers and the white highlights, and to even them out just a tiny bit. In preparation for finishing off the helmet and those lenses, I put another coat of flat red in there, and while I had it on the brush, I also touched it onto the purity seal on this guy's left leg. So at this stage, I finished up the washing process of the armor by putting some dark tone onto his helmet. I decided not to do that until this stage because if I made any mistakes on painting his lenses and his eyes, I would have to go and actually fix them with paint and then I would be painting over tone, which would have caused a greater kind of uh, contrast between those two segments, which I would have had to blend. So the trick to, doing, to fixing that, making sure I don't have to deal with it, is just do the tone work after you've actually done the lenses. So once the tone was all dry on this mini, I went and I grabbed some Stonewall Gray and started to do some edge highlighting. Um, edge highlighting on this kind of mini, or the Space Marines at least, I find is uh, best when done very subtly. 
Uh, so I'm not really going too crazy here. I'm just grabbing the edges that I think will grab the most light and have the highest impact. Um, focal points too, like his hands or the top of his head. Uh, I'm just going to come with the side of the brush, a little stonewall gray on there, and just touch it in. Uh, unfortunately, I decided to use stonewall gray for his uh, kind of brow ridge. That was a little too intense, so I actually came back in with some basalt gray and toned that down a bit. So to finish off the lenses here and also the purity seal, I'm going to grab some red tone. This is just a, a red wash uh, and I'm going to use it to darken down just the fronts of the lenses. That'll give the lenses a little bit more body and life. Uh, and then to complete the process, I'm going to touch a little bit of white into the back corners of the lenses to kind of frame them a little bit and bring the eye towards them. And to finish off the purity seal, I'm just going to touch just a tiny bit of strong tone in there just to define its shape a bit more. So the transfer sheet that I'm using here is actually from an older Space Ring kit. Uh, my buddy Ryan gave me this one, um, thankfully, so I could actually do this video. <laughs> and uh, pretty much what I gotta do is uh, cut them out here. And then in order to minimize any of the kind of clear decal uh, film from showing up, I'm gonna trim them down as much as I can and I will cut some relief cuts into it to allow the decal to actually conform better to the shape. Then I'm gonna grab my Microsol, which is a product that essentially allows this to be applied a little bit easier. Uh, and then with some tweezers and a brush, I'm just gonna slide the decal onto the miniature. At this point, I need to adjust the placement to get the uh, actual decal into the exact right place that I want it to be. So I'm gonna use a little water on a brush to kind of hydrate it and float it around, and then a Q-tip to push it into place. At this stage, I'm gonna grab some Micro Set, which is a product that essentially melts the decal to the surface, and use that to fix it in place. For the other shoulder pad, I repeated the process, although this time I did use a little water to put down the surface to make it a little easier for the uh, decal to be moved around and to allow it to get sucked to the surface a little easier, but it's in general the same process. Uh, although in this case, I did use my thumb to move around the decal a bit. Although this is a double-edged sword because if you press too firmly with the thumb, it can actually come away which is a huge problem. Of course, I won't make that uh, kind of mistake. I'm too professional here. But, you know, uh, hey man, sometimes you mess up. All right, so I can fix this. Uh, nope, that's not gonna work. I need to peel this off my uh, thumb here and I'm gonna use my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand, and kind of just, oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're almost, uh, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, so it's fine, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Deckles are not fixed until they're dry. So the last step here on this mini is to uh, do a little bit of weathering. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to make a tool here. I've used a little bit of kitchen sponge and ripping it into kind of a peak or a point. And then grabbing some of my Parasite Brown, which is a very uh, kind of bright orange red brown. I'm gonna use this to kind of simulate uh, rusted chips. And the way I'm gonna do this is just by taking a little bit on the tip of the sponge and just touching it onto the miniature to create kind of a regular interesting patterns. And I am focusing my attention on places where there would be a lot of wear and tear on this guy as he kind of went around the battlefield and fought. Um, just general little bits of uh, chipping on like his boots, on his arms, on his weapons as well. And while I'm doing this, I'm being very delicate. I'm pressing very, very gently because I don't want to deposit too much chipping and kind of overpower the nice armor that I've taken all this time to paint up. So the next color that I'm using to weather this marine is actually the gunmetal that I put on the palette earlier. And the technique difference here, the only real difference between the Parasite Brown and this one, is that I'm actually coming in and doing a little bit of uh, streaking, um, putting paint down, and then I'm using the side of my sponge to actually wipe it in a direction to kind of give it directionality and give it a uh, motion. And this gunmetal pass, uh, you know, it's going to represent fresh wear and tear, but it's also going to give this guy a little bit of interesting visual uh, kind of flair, because as you move the miniature around, you're actually going to find light passing over these interesting little uh, patches of gunmetal, but it's not so bright as to actually ruin the armor. That's why I chose the dark gunmetal for uh, this uh, weathering pass. The last touch here is going to be grabbing some matte acrylic varnish and putting it on top of the decals. Um, I'm not sure if it's the decal itself or if it's the microsol that I used to adhere it to the mini, but one or the other tends to dry very glossy and kind of bright and, and plasticky. So in order to bring the shoulder pads back in line with the rest of the mini, I just threw some acrylic varnish on there to knock the finish back into the more matte uh, space that the rest of the mini is. 
So to finish off this guy, I need to paint the base and I'm gonna grab some burnt umber and we're gonna be working really quickly here. I just wanna slam down color as fast as possible. So I took some artistic grade burnt umber. This is the cheap stuff that I use for bases and for terrain and then a little bit of stonewall gray and I kind of did a duality of uh, kind of dirty rocks and uh, you know, kind of grounded dirt and earth. And then I grabbed some uh, regular brown paint and I just like dry brushed that onto his boots and onto the perimeter of the, the entire thing. Then I came back in and touched it back in with Stonewall Gray, kind of touching up the highlights that I messed up with the dry brush. After that, I grabbed some bleached titanium and uh, mixed that in with my brown to make a kind of a, a, I don't know what it would be, a bone color to kind of dry brush onto the perimeter. Then a little bit of brown wash to kind of define some shape and shadow. Then a little bit of black wash to continue on with the shape and shadow kind of thing. And that black wash really hammers everything down uh, and actually makes it feel really flat. So I come back in with uh, some gray and some of that bleached titanium and I kind of touch more highlights onto this guy. Just uh, being sloppy and fast and just trying to be fun. And then a little bit of a, I think this is a stonewall gray pass uh, for all of that. And then a little bit more brown washing and we're basically done. So it ends up looking pretty, uh, pretty subtle, but it's uh, not so bad. And then a black base, a little black band around there just to tidy everything up. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And uh, if you do end up using it, I'd love to see your work over on the KMT Discord. Everyone is welcome. There's a link in the description. And also, everyone's welcome to join my Twitch stream chat. Um, I stream twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And the channel is on Twitch, Carl Makes Things. No uh, spaces. Uh, and I pretty much just jam through models like this guy, and I also do a lot of like experimentation. So if you're wanting to see the organic process as it occurs, or you want to ask me questions, you can check me out on Twitch. Um, everyone's welcome. It's a nice chill stream. You guys have a good one, and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Take it easy.